Given where I am now, this may or may not come as a surprise to some of you, but I was a terrible student both in high school and at university. And for a long time, I mostly put it down to just being a gifted child who grew up into an irresponsible young man with no work ethic, essentially just blaming myself for the situation I was in. But after spending a long time both working professionally as a programmer and informally teaching other less experienced programmers, I came to quite a profound realization. Why blame yourself when you can blame someone else? Now, jokes aside, I do think it's easier to take a more sympathetic view on your own struggle once you've seen other people go through a similar thing. And so in the same way that I was always trying to adapt my teaching style to the learning style of the other programmers I was working with, I started trying to observe my own learning style. And when I started treating my own learning like a puzzle to solve, I noticed something quite interesting. When I'm reading an article on something like Wikipedia, If the first sentence has a word I don't know, a piece of jargon or terminology, I click on the link and open it in a new tab. Then I'll start reading the article for the linked word. And you can probably see where this is going, but if the same thing happens again in the first sentence of the linked article, I open a third tab and start reading about that concept. And those of you who are familiar with programming concepts might recognize this approach as a depth-first search, a kind of naturally recursive approach to learning. And while this approach does work really well if you're trying to develop a comprehensive understanding of a subject, it's an amazingly bad way to study for an exam that expects you to know lots of different surface level details or to complete an assignment that doesn't expect a lot of depth. But of course, I don't get stuck this way on everything that I read or watch. I also observed that there were plenty of cases where I'd be able to read an article the whole way through and get some valuable information from it on the first attempt. And so I started observing the structural differences between the cases where I'd get stuck down a hole and the cases where I felt like I was learning new things at a comfortable pace. And something in particular stuck out to me. Every piece of educational material that I interacted with, I could place somewhere along a line from understanding absolutely nothing on the left-hand side to absolutely everything on the right-hand side. Now, that might seem kind of obvious, but the curious thing is, I can't learn anything new from either of these materials. The left-hand one is far too hard, and I can't decipher it at all, whereas the right-hand one is far too easy, and I already know everything that it's trying to teach. But what about the things that fall somewhere in the middle? In my personal experience, I find that the graph looks a bit like this. The amount I'm able to learn creeps up faster and faster as I start to understand most of the material and actually peaks at the point where I can understand almost everything before dropping back down to zero again. In simple terms, I seem to learn best when I already understand almost all of the material being presented. My personal theory about how this works under the hood is that learning is a dependency resolution problem. And in normal human terms, what that means is that complex ideas are built on top of simpler ones. And you won't be able to really learn the complex ideas until you've learned the simple ones first. You might be able to memorize them for an exam, but you won't really understand them. Another way to think about this is like a skill tree or an ability tree in a video game. You can't unlock the more advanced skills until you've unlocked the basic ones first. And so if I wanted to represent my knowledge of mathematics in this way, I might arrange things so that each idea was represented by a circle with an arrow pointing from simpler ideas to more complex ideas that build on top of them. At the end of this process, I'd end up with a connected web of ideas, starting simple in the middle and becoming more complex towards the edges. And the reason I represented things this way is that I think in general, humans learn best when the ideas they're trying to understand are just beyond the very edges of this web. With my particular depth-first learning style, if I encounter a concept that happens to be far outside my current web of knowledge, the process of opening those tabs on Wikipedia is equivalent to searching backwards from this idea, sort of wandering through more and more things that I don't understand until I happen to hit the edge of my existing knowledge. It turns out that not only am I not alone in having this learning style, but it's a well-known idea in psychology and education theory known as the zone of proximal development, first proposed by Lev Vygotsky. 
And the way the term is used these days has drifted a little bit from the original premise, but in a general sense, it's the idea that you learn most effectively when you're attempting things that are just outside your current level of knowledge or skill. Which in this visualization is all the areas just off the edges of our web, like the shallow water on the shores of an island. And when I first heard that term, I suddenly realized that there were a small handful of times in my life when I'd experienced educational material that was so perfectly within that zone for me, it was borderline euphoric. I was able to feel like I was learning in real time rather than getting fixated on not understanding these small details like I usually do. And so as someone who makes educational videos, the idea that this effect might be reproducible was so exciting to me. But how do you actually make educational material that's always in the zone of proximal development? Well, through some more observation, I started to notice that often educational content starts simple and then tends to make these big sudden jumps in difficulty, essentially starting somewhere within my web and then making a jump out way past my zone of proximal development, which means if I want to understand this idea, I have to stop watching or reading and go find other material to fill in all those missing steps between this concept and my current knowledge. So, armed with this realization, I started making videos with a particular approach where, rather than jumping ahead and just expecting the viewer to fill in the gaps on their own, I tried to structure each video so that the content started simple and then only ever progressed in small steps. Essentially, I was attempting to create an experience that stayed in the zone of proximal development for as long as possible, where the viewer never felt like they needed to pause the video and do the equivalent of opening a new tab on Wikipedia. Now, don't get me wrong, I feel like this approach has worked pretty well so far, but putting this idea into practice is not as easy as it sounds. There are a couple of pretty tricky problems to solve. The first one is that unless you want to explain the entire universe from first principles in every video, you need to decide on some minimum bar of assumed background knowledge in each instance. And the lower you set that bar, the longer and more drawn out your material tends to get, and eventually it starts to drift from the original premise. The second problem is that no two humans on Earth have exactly the same knowledge. All of our webs are different shapes, they have different edges and different gaps. And as a result, as the size of your audience increases, you have to compromise more and more on what you assume to be a minimum overlap between students if you're attempting to teach just beyond the edges of that web. I've had comments saying that my material was too simple and others saying it was too advanced on the same video. And that's perfectly reasonable because they are different people after all. It's just not actually possible to make static, one-size-fits-all material given everyone's unique combination of background knowledge. And so we just have to accept that this is the way things are and deal with it. Right? Well, I should probably mention at this point that I'm pathologically stubborn. I have a lot of trouble giving up on things. And so my brain just basically refused to accept that these are intractable problems. And so after a lot of thought, my mind started to wander in a slightly deranged direction. I mentioned that of course it's unreasonable to explain the entire universe from first principles in every video because you'd never have time to get to the actual new information. But maybe it's not so unreasonable to do that if you're only doing it once. What if I produced an educational series that actually did start at the absolute fundamentals of computer programming with no assumed background knowledge at all? If I was very careful to never use a term or reference a concept without explaining it first, I might be able to produce a completely standalone educational experience that didn't require any external material and for new programmers was always in the zone of proximal development. If I started from the most foundational concepts and each lesson carefully extended the web of knowledge just past the edges, by the time the series arrived at the more complex ideas, instead of having to worry that I was using terms and concepts that were too advanced, I could actually guarantee the minimum overlapping knowledge of the audience because I taught it myself. But of course, even if that big crazy idea actually works, I still haven't solved the second problem. Remember how I mentioned that some people find material too rudimentary and others find it too advanced? Well, if we're going from absolute first principles and explaining each concept carefully in order, 
Even someone with no prior knowledge at all will be able to follow from the very beginning, eliminating that too hard case. So we're down to just one problem left to fix, which is how do I keep the material entertaining and engaging enough that programmers with some experience are still willing to follow the material from the very beginning? Well, without spoiling too much, I guess you'll just have to come and find out whether I pulled it off or not. Available from today, I'm starting to publish episodes of a brand new low-level programming fundamentals course called The Simple Joy of Programming. It doesn't quite explain the entire universe from scratch, but it does start from the absolute foundations of how computers work at the software level and builds up step by step to the point where you'll have a strong intuitive understanding of how any piece of modern software operates under the hood. Now, you don't need any prior programming knowledge at all to do this course, but I think as an experienced programmer, you'll still get a lot out of it, especially if you're not that familiar with lower level concepts. You can expect to learn about machine code, how programming languages work under the hood, all that good stuff. As well as access to the course material, you'll also get access to a private Discord to chat with me and other people following the course, suggestions and voting on topics for new videos that I make, early access to the general programming videos I publish on YouTube, and high quality ad-free versions of all of my previous videos available for download. The course is available through Patreon for $8 a month, which will allow me to give it the time and attention I think it deserves. I am of course going to continue to publish educational programming videos on YouTube as well, but they'll be available about a week or so earlier for course subscribers. You can find out more at thesimplejoyofprogramming.com or by following the links in the description. I also just wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you. Honestly, this last year has been so unexpected and so wonderful, and I really appreciate all the support you've given me so far. I hope you enjoy the course, and I'll see you there.